How are you guys doing? Congratulations, you made it through another week of online learning. Um, uh, on the horizon, we have the end of the quarter on in October, and we will be taking our final test for unit two on October 12th. So get ready for that. Today is the 20th day of your online curriculum, and we are going to be talking about quadratic functions today. So a quadratic function is a function that can be factored into two binomials. Um, it also always looks like this. You have a squared term over here, um, an x term, and a numerical term, right? It's always going to look similar, and this whole thing equals y, something I usually forget about. Anyways, what we learned about yesterday was factoring these guys, and I wanted to revisit that topic because I didn't do the best job. So when we are factoring a quadratic equation, right? Um, this number in the middle is what we are adding up to. And the number on the, the numerical number is what we are multiplying by. So just to make that a little bit clearer, I'm gonna switch up the colors here. Um, so this one, we are adding or subtracting to get to, and the numerical term we are multiplying by. So what we're gonna factor first is that 20 value. What are all the factors of 20? One and 20, two and 10, four and five. Okay, which two can add up or subtract up to negative nine? So if I have, um, let's see, let's change colors again real fast, let's go green. If I have a one, if I have a positive 1 and a negative 10, that would work, right? Um, if I have a negative 4 and a negative 5, that would work, right? Um, so let's see which one is which, right? If we have negative 10, positive 1, this number would be a 10. Sorry, I did that wrong. 1 times 10 is not 20. Way to go, Mr. Curry. Factoring, you made another mistake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one wouldn't work, right? Uh, the only one that would work is four and five, right? And so we have x minus four and x minus five. Negative four times negative five equals positive 20. Negative four plus negative five equals a negative nine. So we are correct. But just to be sure, let's foil that guy out. Oops, sorry. And x times x is x squared. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And x times negative 5 would be negative 5x. Do this one. Oh, what? This. Oh, my gosh. That one. And then we also have to do that. So negative 5x and negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. And you can see that those two would combine. So what this means is that this entire equation is has a y value of 0 at 4 comma 0 and 5 comma 0. So the solutions to this problem are 4 and 5. Moving on. A quadratic has a particular pattern to it. In the front of this pattern, we are always going to have uh, coefficients, right? Whatever is in front is called a coefficient. And since these follow a particular pattern, we can use this idea to create a formula. So on this one, we looked for the factors, right? And once we found the factors, we tried to figure out which ones work. Well, quadratics don't always have to be whole numbers, right? They don't always have to have fractions in them, and they don't always have to work so nice and neat, right? They can have whole sorts of decimals and stuff. So if we run into one that is totally disgusting, right, and we can't do it in our head or find the factors of the C value, right, we can also use a quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, 
So what's up guys? Uh, sorry about that. Hopefully I edited it so you didn't even notice that I made a horrible mistake. Um, but here what, is what we did. We have a formula for these quadratics that get a little gross, right? And the formula takes all the coefficients a, b, and c and plugs them into this equation over here, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So let's see if that works with our equation, right? So we used to have x squared minus 9x, right? So we're going to have our red value, in this case was 1, right? Um, minus 9x would be our b value. So we'll do that in blue, minus 9. And then plus c in our last equation, our C value was 20. So this means that I'm going to plug in each of those values where they should go. So we have negative negative 9, which is a positive 9 for our B value, plus or minus, taking the square root of B squared, 9 squared is 81, minus 4, our A value is 1, Right, um, so times one over there times our C value, which is 20. Sorry, I'm going to put the over one on the bottom too. Uh, so C value is 20, and we plug that over here. Uh, the two doesn't change, so I'm going to write that in green. So much color changing, yay. Okay, uh, so we now we've plugged in all of our numbers into our formula, all of our coefficients. 9 plus or minus the square root of 81 minus 4 times 1 times 20 over 2 times 1. So 81 minus 4 times 1 times 20 is 81 minus 80, which leaves us with just 1, right? And the square root of 1 is just 1. So this whole thing over here on the top part reduces down to 9 plus or minus 1. 9 plus 1 would be 10, and 10 over 2 is 5. 9 minus 1 would be 8, and 8 over 2 is 4. And those were our two solutions that we found through factoring. So if you don't want to factor, you can always use this formula, the quadratic formula, to factor a quadratic. It works 100% of the time as long as you don't mess up one of your minuses or additions. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for the showdown or return to the live classroom if you don't want to see it. Have a wonderful day. Now, how long will it take for you to beat them all? <laughs> Just when you thought the math lesson was over, we come back with more math. So using scientific notation will help us solve this problem, right? If Mr. Current was able to defeat one coronavirus particle in 45 seconds, yeah, that's not true. It's not how viruses are destroyed. Anyways, um, in a single cell, when a single cell explodes and releases all of its virus particles to the rest of the body, there are about 700 viral particles released in one cell. There are about 32, 3 trillion cells in your body. So 3 times 10 to the 13th would be that number. So to figure out how many uh, viral particles are released in one person, we have 7 times 10 to the second power times three times 10 to the third. Using scientific notation, we multiply the first two guys together, we get 21 times 10, and then we would add these two to get 10 to the 15th. So 21 times 10 to the 15th, then we need to account for all of the people who already have coronavirus in the US, which is about 7 million. So we do 7 million times 
21 times 10 to the 15th. 7 times 21 is 147. Uh, times 10 to the 6, we add those two together to get times 10 to the 21st. So the current viral load of the U.S. right now is about 147 times 10 to the 21st. And if Mr. Cartwright defeats every one of those every um, 45 seconds, hold on for some intense math calculations. We are left with, it would take Mr. Cartwright six quadrillion years to single-handedly take apart each viral particle in the United States of America. So, I think you're going to need some help, Mr. Cartwright. 